firms. So I'm going to turn it over. Kyle Kabochik is our internship coordinator for the School of Business Office of Career Services, and we are thrilled to have him as our moderator. And if you have any questions, please do it in the chat. Please remember that this is a professional event, so we want to keep all of our questions professional. And usually I say turn off your iPhones, but um, I won't do that this time, okay? Um, no food this time. Last year we had some good food and we apologize. Um, when we come back, we'll have food for everybody. So I'm going to turn it over to Kyle and I want to thank you all. Awesome. Hey, thank you, Carrie, for um, introduction. Um, on behalf, again, of the School of Business Career Services and then um, the accounting program with George Mason, we're just excited to have everybody here. Uh, again, thank you to all of our panelists that I will go ahead and just kind of get things started. I'll go ahead and kind of hand it over to each of them, um, to Victoria, Nicole, and Lawrence. Um, if you'd just like to give a quick introduction um, about you, um, maybe a little bit about your firm, two or three minutes, um, we'll kind of just start it off and maybe I can just start off with Victoria. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I know, you know, typically I'm used to seeing you guys in the auditorium, but I'm so happy to be here today to chat with you guys. Uh, my name is Victoria Mack, and I am the university recruiter here at Grant Thornton. Um, I am recruiting for our Metro DC office, which is just in Arlington, but I also recruit for Baltimore. So um, if you have interest in Arlington or Baltimore, I'm happy to talk to you guys. Um, we're actively recruiting for our audit, tax, and advisory service lines in both locations. So I'm glad to be here um, with you guys today and looking forward to um, answering any questions you guys have. Awesome. Thank you, Nick, Victoria. Uh, next, let's hand it over to Nicole. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Stroud from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, I'm actually a partner in our asset management group. I'm an audit partner, so in the assurance group. Um, I've been at PwC. Today is actually my anniversary at PwC at 18 years. Um, I always tell people I never tell my age, but y'all are smart and probably do math on that and figure that part out. Um, I am located in the Wash Metro area. Um, I live in Vienna, but I mostly work out of Tyson's in Washington, D.C. Um, I have clients that range from the Baltimore area down to actually Raleigh. Um, Currently, that doesn't really matter since we're all virtual, as you can imagine. Um, in my time at PwC, this is my kind of third office that I've been in. Um, and I've, I've done some of those offices with my children and husband as well, uh, including Boston and Baltimore and here in D.C. twice, actually. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm a mom, so I have a... Um, two kids, a four-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. So my life is quite complicated as a work from home mom at the moment. Um, but I'm happy and excited to be here and, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have about the profession, um, what I do on a daily basis or the recruiting process that we're kicking off this year. Awesome, thank you, Nicole. And then finally close it out with Lawrence. Hello everyone, I'm Lawrence Palmer. I work with Baker Tilly. Um, I'm a manager in, um, the construction real estate practice um, in our Tyson's office, um, um, Tyson's corner office. Uh, I am a grad of Mason, um, so um, I can speak to um, the um, the degree and kind of the weight that it holds. So welcome and best of luck to all of you and let me know how I can help. Um, in brief, um, I have a kind of an untraditional career, which you guys can think about in the, in the back of your heads while you're you know, contemplating your questions, but I actually started in public, went to private, uh, and then I went back to public. So I kind of have the private and the public experience, so I can give you kind of both uh, perspectives. Um, and um, just in general, um, you know, for me, um, and, um, you know, not just say Baker Tilly, but, you know, any, uh, there go the dogs. Uh, all right, we're good. Um, but uh, just in general, I think it's culture. Um, just being in a surrounding you're comfortable with, with people that will support you. Um, you know, everyone has, you know, the same, not the same technology, but everyone has a process and a technology. But for me, it's, it's about the people. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. I'm going to go awesome. shut my door real quick. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all for kind of just opening up a little bit of uh, your lives to um, everybody here. So thinking of the daily um, lifestyle of, people, associates, managing partners, 
Um, what does the day-to-day -day look like um, in this kind of industry for you all? And I'll kind of let whoever would like to start out go for it. Um, I'm happy to jump in. So um, my day-to-day -day looks a lot different today than it did eight months ago, five months ago, however the math works out at this point. Um, you know, the one thing I always say about public accounting and what I do and what I love about it is that I am doing something different every day. Um, I, I couldn't imagine a life where I'm, I was sitting in a cube or the same office every single day. I love the fact that every day I'm solving a different problem for a different person. Um, whether that's one of my clients, the firm itself, students like yourselves, um, I, I get to do something different. It, it's different places. It's different people. Um, you know, I'm not usually the smartest person in the room. There's usually somebody else who I'm learning from on a regular basis, which I find very challenging in what I do. Um, you know, currently my room that I'm in is virtual. Um, and, and it's, it's difficult, right? At this point in time, we're all trying to balance what it looks like from a family life, um, being able to walk away from your screen, sometimes turning off your camera and just doing phone calls versus videos and how do you balance all of that? Um, the biggest piece of it is communication. We're all in this together, right? This is not a Nicole Stroud problem that's stuck in my basement and I can't miraculously come out, right? This is, this is everybody's in it together. I think I've forged more personal relationships with the people I work with, both from the client side as well as internally to PwC. I've met everyone's kid. I've met everyone's spouse. I've met more puppies. Um, which makes me happy. I've seen cats walk across screens and mute people. Um, you know, I, it's different today, but it's still, it, you can still do it. It's just about communicating with everybody and setting boundaries and making sure that you really get out of it what you're, what you're looking for. Um, and I hope, you know, come, I used to think Labor Day, but now that we're past Labor Day, um, you know, this time next year, it will look more like it did five, six months ago than it does today. I do agree um, with everything Nicole was saying, even here at Grant Thornton, the day-to-day -day is still very much people-oriented. So you're still very much active on your team, whether you're in audit, whether you're in tax, um, you definitely still have that client interaction, but everything is now virtual, um, like Nicole was saying. So just kind of finding your middle ground with now being kind of transitioned to a virtual society is what we're seeing over here at GT. Um, yeah, I would agree with everything that's been said. Um, you know, it's, um, it's kind of, uh, interesting cause obviously it's a new wrinkle, it's a new challenge. Um, and, you know, just comparing private to public, um, you know, like Nicole was saying, um, you know, she can't foresee herself seeing in a, you know, a cubicle, you know, kind of all day and, you know, accounting is processes, there's rules, your debits have to equal your credit, your cash flow has to, you know, to balance, um, but I would say public accounting kind of adds an additional wrinkle, you know, that it is challenging. You are kind of forced to grow. You, you need to know and learn, um, I should say, uh, project management skills, um, and you need to learn interpersonal skills. Um, and it's, it's times like these um, that, that really comes into, um, into play because, yeah, we have this, this new challenge where we're, you know, not talking to ourselves directly, but we're trying to build relationships and give instructions and project updates, et cetera, over Zoom. Um, but um, I think the industry in general is just kind of equipped to do that and not, you know, with the technology as well as kind of the person that it kind of takes to be successful in a public accounting firm. Um, so it's a challenge, but, you know, as Victoria and Nicole were saying, um, you know, we're, we're adapting. Um, um, but yeah, absolutely, it's 100% different. Thank you for all that. A couple of you have brought up um, skills, skills you may not have thought you had to tap into as much. What are some of the critical skills that you feel like students um, would need as they pursue a career within accounting? And then how have you seen some of those displayed during kind of that search interview process? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm not sure if Nicole and Lawrence have seen this with their firms, but you know, especially coming in as an entry level associate, just as much as we look at some of the hard skills, we're also looking for some of those soft skills that you might acquire with some of the groups on campus organizations that you guys are a part of and things of that nature. So um, especially when it comes in terms to audit, you know, we're really looking for people that have those teamwork skills and have acquired that through on campus activities, um, whether that's Beta Alpha Psi or whether that's other various organizations that you can join on campus. Um, so I think that's pretty helpful for us in terms of soft skills. So uh, I don't disagree with that concept whatsoever, right? Like I can, I can teach somebody how to audit. I can teach somebody how to do debits and credits. I can't teach somebody the inherent desire to do well and to communicate and interact with folks, right? And that's what I do all day. I talk to people. I go back to the solving of problems. Um, I would always tell people that that should be a focus, but I think we've seen in the last couple of years where it shifted a lot as well into technology, right? Like, we now need folks who understand technology and the different options that are out there and the data analytics um, and how all of that works. Those classes didn't even exist when I graduated high school or college. Um, you know, so, you know, at PwC, we've really taken the concept of everyone needs to learn it. This isn't, we're not gonna have specialists who understand the technology to come in and help every single person needs to understand the technologies and takes the trainings and become involved. Um, and I think that's very important. When you look at the classes that are available to you at Mason, right? Like, look, there's data analytic classes. I know I'm on the advisory board. I, I just listened to a whole presentation on it. So take advantage of those things as you're going through it. Um, because if you come in with that base set, you are, you're a step ahead. You're, you're where we need you to be. And you can focus more on some of the other skills you're gonna learn um, in the field as you're going through the auditing. Yeah, I would agree with what Nicole was saying. Um, I think desire and motivation are very important. Um, I think you have a good basis um, from your um, your studies on accounting, um, but um, it's those other um, interpersonal skills, um, it's project management, it's problem solving, and you might not have those skills coming right out of school, um, but you will need to learn those because um, you will be challenged because everyone's going to be growing and, you know, growing is, is challenging at times, you know, it's personal growth. Um, and if you're not, if it's easy, then you're, you're not growing. I've heard that expression or something along those lines. Um, so having that desire and that motivation, um, I think will carry you through those, those times. Um, and so, you know, I would say, you know, as a tip for your interviewing process, no matter what your background is, Let's say you're not the president of Beta Alpha Psi. Um, I married the secretary of our Beta Alpha Psi. Um, so that's just kind of nerd background accounting fraternity. Mm -hmm. um, but um, um, yeah, you might not have been the president of Beta Alpha Psi, but own your, your experience and sell it. Just be proud of what you've done. I think that last point is also really great. Thinking, how do we focus on what we do have, not highlight things that we don't? So I really appreciate you bringing that up as well, Lawrence. Um, so as kind of the past nine months or so, the entire industry has seen a shift, the entire country and world has seen a shift. As we think about that, what are some major trends that we've seen in the industry in the past couple of years and how can we kind of foresee things moving forward? I might pass this question along to the professionals that are in the industry. So it'll be interesting to hear what Nicole and Lawrence have to say. It goes back to my previous comment, right? Like it's the technology that's changed over, you know, the last couple of years. That's where everybody's going, right? And it's technology and that doesn't, that's not just like auditing, right? What I do, that's on the tax side, that's on the consulting side and our clients are looking at ways to, to implement technology. Um, you know, and one of the great things to do is to have that experience yourself. So I think that's the approach, you know, we've taken. Um, you know, the technology is changing the way we do our work every day. And if the technology wasn't here and we weren't using it, right now it would not work. This whole remote concept and virtual and everything else, right, like it wouldn't work. We couldn't do it. Um, that doesn't mean to say I don't spend some of my meetings with very um, high up folks within my clients trying to figure out how to get them off of mute. 
so that we can all <laughs> hear them and see them and all of that stuff or, um, you know, things of that nature. But, but definitely that's the shift we're seeing. We are seeing the shift to technology. How do we use the cloud? How do we use um, workflows and bots and things like that to do the work that honestly none of us want to do anyways? Um, so how do we take that kind of piece so we can add more value to our clients and really demonstrate to our clients that we are trusted business advisors and we're not just kind of the, the bean pushers, right, of, of everything that we're doing and how that works. Right, 100%, yeah. Uh, technology um, and, um, you know, we're kind of, um, to overstate the obvious, we're kind of in interesting times, right? We, we'll see how um, different sectors of the economy do well, which sectors go away. Um, you know, when, um, when people were, when companies were building out the telecom um, network, uh, you know, they were burying wire underneath the ground and they were renting that wire and there was no clear accounting guidance on that at that time. So, you know, you had to interpret the guidance as it was until, you know, they came around. It took a couple of years to, to kind of come up with, uh, um, with uh, you know, some skylines. Um, but, you know, things will evolve, rules will change. Um, you know, there's um, AC, ASC 606 and 842, which are kind of big deals um, and which require, require adapting to. Um, so um, the counting rules and principles, they, they will adapt as the economy adapts. But yes, absolutely. Technology um, is obviously a key role to, to show value instead of just being rogue and, you know, doing the, at, you know, additions and minuses. Um, but showing you're a trusted business advisor um, is also very important. Awesome, that's incredible insight and I really appreciate all of that and kind of stepping out a little bit further and thinking about the technology and where can we find that education. Um, kind of speaking of education, I noticed there have been kind of a couple questions within the chat. Um, I guess from your insight from your input, um, to what level of education do you feel like people need to pursue accounting? Does it need to be an accounting specific degree, a concentration, or maybe just some sort of minor? Um, is a graduate degree eventually necessary? Um, even to Lawrence, maybe you may have some more insight on this, but what is the difference between public and private regarding kind of educate, formal education? Um, and I'm very curious about all three of your experience and what does that look like? Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, so I, I actually do have an MBA um, in finance um, and real estate. Um, I did start with just a bachelor's in accounting. I just say just, but uh, a bachelor's in accounting from Mason. Um, and I think, um, um, I think as far as the MBA is concerned and having a graduate degree, I think it just opens more doors that obviously you learn more in depth, but I think it, it, definitely separates you from say your peers um, and gives you some more experience to follow upon. Um, I would not say it's a necessity um, in public accounting, um, you know, um, or, or even private. I, I probably put more weight in private accounting. I think it's more valued in private um, in, in industry than say public. Um, and um, I'll just, I'll just pause there and I'll, I'll maybe hit the private versus public. Um, question a little bit later, maybe in the chat. So I, I echo those things, um, you know, from a perspective of a public accounting firm, right, we still want to be able to hire CPAs. So you should really be thinking about how your degree and your degree path intersects with um, being able to have enough credits for your CPA license. I actually didn't have enough when I graduated with my undergrad. Um, so I'm sure you can see in my picture, there's two degrees on the wall, Bucknell and University of Maryland. University of Maryland is where I got my MBA. Um, but it's so that I could get the, I'm pointing the wrong way. Um, it's hard in the computer screen. So the, the one that above, that's above it that you really can't see, that's my CPA license, right? Um, you know, that's a very important piece of paper to have. Do I think that, you know, if, if you want to be an auditor, you want to go tax, a, an accounting degree with a concentration makes a lot of sense. Um, I would tell you that, you know, minors and data analytics, um, information systems, those things, I would have told you five, six years ago, eh, okay, that's great. Now, I think it's very much what sets you apart from the folks sitting around you. Um, you know, I've heard some feedback some, from some other firms that they're not as focused on the CPA, but 
they are, right? We still need the debits and credits and the basic knowledge of the accounting um, to be able to do that. Uh, you know, it might vary a little bit different if you're looking at a consulting arm of one of the firms and whether or not that matters. And it might matter more kind of what type of industry you're looking to get into versus the CPA exam accounting auditing route. Um, you know, from an overarching long-term career perspective, not everybody joins a public accounting firm because they want to be a partner, right? Like, I, no one thinks that, right? I didn't think I wanted to be a partner when I started at PwC. Um, so getting an MBA and having kind of that in your back pocket is also something that's very beneficial if you decide to only do a couple years in public accounting and then you want to go somewhere else. Um, you know, I, I think that as well as having your CPA exam makes you much more um, able to look at some of those different areas um, and then go from kind of the public to private concept. Yep, we see the same thing um, at Grant Thornton. So everything that Lawrence and Nicole has said is, is accurate at GT as well. Um, I've seen candidates have their master's in accounting. Um, I've seen candidates not have their master's degree and achieve 150 credits in four years during their undergrad. Um, and so definitely wanna reassure everyone that we look at both applications the same, whether you have the master's in accounting or you achieve your 150 credits in four years, we're still actively considering everyone equally um, but in terms of the experience that you would get if you do decide to get your master's um, at least from an education perspective it can be greater than potentially taking you know filler classes just to hit that 150 credits so that's pretty much what we're seeing over here at GT really really great insight I really appreciate all of that um, we're coming up on 425. I did want to touch on one more question that we have prepared and then kind of do a quick fire around in the end. We wanted to look back on the job searching within the COVID environment. Um, so I guess kind of closing it out, how do you think students can navigate preparing for this job search in the industry during this current COVID-19 um, environment? I, mean, I defer a little bit to Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would say, right, is that it's no different. You're just on a screen with me. And honestly, that's where PwC was anyways. We're already at virtual interviews. Um, my biggest piece of advice, um, while I'm breaking it right now, I'm professional on the top. Make sure you're professional on the bottom. I've literally had people move their camera or get up in the middle of an interview and have like gym shorts on. Don't do that. Um, be professional top to bottom. Just be prepared and relax. Right, we're, we're all nice humans at the end of the day. They wouldn't let us do recruiting if we weren't nice humans. Um, we've all been there. So, you know, relax, take deep breaths. It's, it's all good. Yep, and if I could say, probably the biggest piece of advice I feel like I have for students that are in this now virtual world, when you're coming to a virtual event, you know, make sure you're coming off of mute and talking to the people that are here to speak with you all. You know, we love chatting in the chat box, but we also want to hear from you guys too. So, you know, if there's the opportunity for you to speak with some of the representatives on the screen, definitely take advantage of that and do so. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's in essence the same process, right? But it's all on screen and use it to your advantage. Um, if, um, like for example, you can't see my hands right now, but if I get a tough question or a zinger, I could squeeze my fist right now, like a stress kind of type thing. No one will see it. Um, you know, I could have um, maybe my top bullet points on a um, um, a post-it or a, a car right there on my screen. No one's gonna see it and it'll be a good refresher. If you're in person, you know, you can't come with any of that or, you know, they're gonna see you clutching your fist or you don't have cliff notes uh, or like that. Um, so. Um, Use it to your advantage, um, bring your personality, bring your confidence. Should probably unmute myself. That's some really great stuff. Um, I really appreciate all of your insight. Um, I do understand that um, some of you all will be available a little bit later to some private breakout rooms. Um, towards the end of this, so we have, so we have two more sessions. Um, we have Megan here from our career services office had posted the information for the next session in the chat. So if anybody participating would like to go to the next one, that is available there. Um, if you're looking to connect further with any of our uh, wonderful panelists today, um, they'll be available a little bit later today as well. Um, I know Victoria had offered to connect with LinkedIn at all, or if anyone else would like to um, participate in that, I would love to connect in any way. Um, 
But kind of as the final remarks, I want to thank um, Victoria, Nicole, and Lawrence uh, for taking the time to participate with us. Um, any last remarks from the three of y'all? Thank you guys so much for having us. Um, we're going to have our own breakout session, I think, at 530. So I'm happy to talk about all the roles I'm recruiting for. So I hope you guys stop by. Uh, I echo that. Thank you all for joining. Um, there were a ton of participants. PwC will also be having that breakout session at 530. I will be on there as well as some other folks from PwC. Um, so please join if you have any questions or want to just get to know us a little bit better. Thank you all. Thanks everyone, best of luck. Um, I will be uh, in a breakout session as well and I'll be joined um, someone from our tax group. Um, so if that is an interest, um, please join us. Good luck everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Great, thank you everyone. And then um, if Megan one more time can post the, all the information to the next session in the chat. We got a little bit buried by all the thank yous. Um, so that would be awesome and thank you for continuing on with us. Thanks Kyle, have a good one. Of course.